Hey friends, welcome to our Moon Medicine mini class for December 12th and 13th. This weekend we are celebrating all of the celestial events taking place this winter. And I'm so excited to share some of these celestial phenomena with you so that you can step outside of your home and observe them in the night sky. And also so that you can understand that some of these significant cosmic events that are a delight to see can also affect us physically, emotionally, and energetically. And especially in this busy season of holy days, there are a lot of emotions circulating and swirling for many of us. And by developing an awareness of these celestial events and their impact on our lives, we can integrate them into our experience and navigate them more gracefully. And I have to tell you, we have an exciting end of the year ahead in the skies. So let's jump in and explore some of the celestial events taking place this week and next. So first, the most active meteor shower of 2020, the Geminid meteor shower, is going to peak on Sunday, December 13th, with a follow-up on December 14th, Monday. This meteor shower is aligned with the new moon on Monday, so the dark skies are going to give us a brilliant opportunity to see this cosmic display. The Geminid meteor shower gets its name from the constellation Gemini, or the twins, because the meteors that we see appear to emanate from a spot in the sky located within the Gemini constellation. Historically speaking, Gemini are a fairly new meteor shower compared to others like the Perseids, which was first recorded in 36 AD, or the Leonids that date back to 902 AD. The Lyrid meteor shower, which rains down upon us in April, is some of the oldest meteors on record, having first been documented in Chinese chronicles that date back to 687 AD. Comparatively speaking, the first accounts of the Geminid meteors only were documented in 1862. Now, meteors from the Geminid shower typically encounter our planet at about 22 miles per second, and that translates to over 79,000 miles per hour. And this is about half of the speed of a Leonid or a Perseid meteor. So in the Geminid meteor shower, we tend to see longer streaks across the sky. For this reason, meteors in this shower often get the nickname celestial field mice because it appears as if they tend to scurry across the sky from one part to another. These meteors can also appear to take a more jagged route and they can take on a multitude of colors, the most common being yellow. These meteors tend to be fairly bright anyway, but this year they won't be compromised by bright moonlight in the sky, so it should be quite a show. Now the Geminid meteor shower will be all but gone by December 16th, so be sure to catch them while you can. Peak activity is said to occur around 8 p.m. Eastern time on December 13th as Gemini rises above the east-northeast horizon just as twilight is ending. But they begin to appear more numerous and bright as the skies darken after 9 p.m. And the best views will come around 2 a.m. when their radiant is passing nearly directly overhead. Rates of meteors in the shower could exceed 120 meteors per hour. Now, if you're going to head outside and watch these meteors, give yourself plenty of time for your eyes to adjust to the dark and then let your gaze focus and soften in the sky. Now, if you live in an area where there's a lot of light pollution in the sky, or you have limited visibility because of a forest-covered sky view, then consider venturing out a bit so that you can catch a better view of these meteors. Now, it's winter time, so be sure to prepare yourself with some warm clothes and maybe a few extra blankets. And don't forget that craning your head back to look towards the sky for too long can give you quite an achy neck and shoulders the next morning. So consider bringing a thermarest or a sleeping bag or even a beach lounger so that you can lay horizontal and stretch out and gaze upwards to the heavens with a comfortable posture. In fact, why not bring along a little bit of extra hot cocoa to celebrate this show in the sky? Next up on Monday, December 14th, we'll be celebrating the new moon with a solar eclipse. Now this eclipse is not visible from the United States, but certainly we still experience its effects energetically. 
the upcoming Sagittarius solar eclipse will illuminate our goals and help us focus on the truth of what we want in our lives just in time for the new year. New moons are always a time of new beginnings and give us energy to support those. But this eclipse in particular will help us tie up loose ends that can create the space for the new ideas, new thoughts, new behaviors, and new dreams that we want to call into our lives. Now, at the same time that this new moon can help us support new beginnings, Oftentimes, eclipses can feel a little confusing or our foresight can feel fuzzy. That is to be expected with any eclipse. Eclipses are often thought of as the in-between time. Just as the shadow crosses in front of the sun, these events can be transformative energetically. This particular eclipse is in Sagittarius, near the south node, which is a moment of personal and collective transformation. This can support realignment towards living a more authentic and embodied life if that's what we need right now. I encourage you to allow yourself some stillness and solitude as this new moon solar eclipse moves through on December 14th, especially to help navigate any feelings of confusion or any lack of clarity that you might be experiencing. Give yourself the space to focus on turning inward. You might want to engage with your journal or another creative practice like vision boards and collages or artwork that can help you see your inner vision more clearly through that creative expression. Be sure to listen to your emotions and feelings at this time. Give yourself some extra self-care, some time and space to relax, to be present with the needs of your physical body. This is not a time for us to rush into 2021, no matter how much we're ready to leave 2020 behind. Instead, this is a time for us to slowly put one foot in front of another, being very clear about the path on which we walk and giving ourselves plenty of space to integrate this experience, to be mindful and intentional about each step along the way. Next up in our cosmic forecast, the moon will square Mars on December 16th, the moon will sextile Venus on December 17th, and the moon will sextile both Mars and Venus on December 18th. These conjunctions or alignments bring their own unique energy to our day-to-day -day experience, and we will cover these in greater depth in our upcoming moon medicine class. Now moving later into the week, there has been a lot of talk about the upcoming conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter happening on December 21st. And believe me, we will get to that in a moment. But first, I want to speak to Saturn's position in the sky before it gets so close to kissing Jupiter. Saturn has been sitting in the last degree of Capricorn for the past week or so, and it will continue to remain in that position until it moves into Aquarius on December 17th. This position of Saturn and Capricorn can cause us to feel a lot of tension. We can feel blocked or restricted. And there's a stagnancy that can feel a little intense, especially because the new moon in Sagittarius with that solar eclipse wants us to leap forward into the next era, into the next phase. So this is all the more reason with that shift of the solar eclipse on Monday to allow ourselves plenty of space for relaxation and for integration. Once Saturn moves into Aquarius, then those initial resolutions of loose ends will get tied up and we can start to see those big shifts forward taking place with more ease and more grace. So a few days later, on December 20th, Jupiter also enters Aquarius, meeting Saturn there. And then, the next day, it's the moment we've been waiting for. December 21st, winter solstice, the sun moving into the constellation Capricorn, and drumroll please, that great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. We call this phenomena the Great Conjunction because these two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, are the farthest from us that we can see with our naked eye. Astronomers have looked for centuries to Jupiter and Saturn and their orbits to calculate great cycles of time and other cosmic patterns. These two planets will be sitting incredibly close to each other as we view them from the sky, making them appear almost as if they were a single bright star. 
which has long been referred to as the Star of Bethlehem or the Christmas Star. Of course, these objects aren't necessarily as physically close as they appear to us. They simply look that way because of their orbital alignment that we view from planet Earth. This is the first time that this conjunction has been visible in this way from North America since March 4th, 1226, almost 800 years ago. A similar conjunction occurred in 1623 when these two planets aligned quite closely and likewise in May of 2000. But each time they were very close to the sun and they were obscured by the sun's brightness. A great conjunction occurs roughly every 20 years but this is the closest that the planets will line up in the night sky since the Middle Ages, and also the best viewing for us from planet Earth because it won't be obscured by the bright light of the moon. This is also the first great conjunction to occur on a winter solstice since 1166 AD, all of which to say, this is a historic celestial occasion. Now Saturn is connected to maturity. In the body it rolls over our bones and our teeth, and it's associated with our relationship to authority. Jupiter is connected to expansion, abundance, and gratitude. And when the two planets meet, they balance out each other's energies and help us find a healthy point of center, both personally and collectively. They're meeting in the element of air, which rules communication, the mind, and the way that we socially relate to others. So this conjunction occurs at a historically significant moment and really gives a boost of support to new beginnings. You might even think of this as a precursor to setting your New Year's resolutions. We also reach the first quarter phase of the moon on December 21st, which is a time to take action and commit to putting in the effort needed to move ourselves in the direction of our intentions, our goals, and our dreams. So with that, I encourage you to set time aside on this conjunction on winter solstice to set your intentions for the coming year as the things we begin in this type of energy will really stick with us ongoing. And that's not just our goals and our dreams, but also our thought patterns and our beliefs. I also encourage you to witness this phenomena with your own eyes because observing this from planet Earth is going to be quite a sight. On the days leading up to the conjunction, you can actually measure the distance between the planets as they grow closer, and it's approximate, of course. But if you extend your hand at arm's length and make the shapes shown in the image here, you can approximate the corresponding angles and distances between the planets. Now to see the great conjunction for yourself on solstice night, you'll want a clear view to the southeast about 45 minutes after sunset. While the planets will be closest on December 21st at 0.1 degree of distance, this phenomena will be visible from anywhere on Earth about an hour after sunset in the Northern Hemisphere during the entire last week of December. If you have high-powered binoculars or a telescope and you have clear skies, you might even get to see the moons of both Jupiter and Saturn, as well as Saturn's rings. Jupiter will appear brighter than Saturn because it's both bigger and closer to us. Jupiter is about a half billion miles away and Saturn is roughly double that distance from the planet Earth. We won't see a conjunction this close again until March 15th, 2080. So be sure to get outside and take a peek at the end of this month for a brilliant winter treat. You can also follow a number of astronomical research facilities such as the Lowell Observatory, which will be live streaming videos of a great view of the celestial meeting over their websites. You can check out the links below to see more. While you stare at Jupiter and Saturn, so very far away, I invite you to think of all the space dust that separates us from the planets and how we too are made from the same stuff as the stars. The two planets will feel so close to us during this conjunction, despite their distance. And I find that observing their great dance through the cosmos can help me feel a little bit more connected during a year that for many of us has felt very isolated and disconnected. By observing the stars and learning their cycles, I find that I can remember what a gift it is to be born on the spinning rock at this weird time as I orbit through the solar system and fly through the galaxy. 
remembering my place in this grand universe and what a gift it is to witness that during this lifetime often helps my worldly day-to-day -day problems find a different context and gives my life a greater sense of meaning. All of this once-in-a-lifetime cosmic activity leads up to the full moon in Cancer, also known as the full cold moon, on December 29th, which will be the first lunation that we cover in our upcoming moon medicine class. If you haven't gotten a chance to sign up yet, visit us at moonmedicine.org for a sample lesson and a few more mini classes just like this one. If you use the code COSMIC when you register, you'll save $50 off of one-time tuition or space that discount out over payment plans that can be offered monthly or seasonally. I hope that our lesson tonight gives you some inspiration and information to get outside in the next week or two and witness some of the fabulous phenomena that the sky has in store for us. Until next time, happy moon gazing.